Ugh. I've never done this before. My mom's always done it <laughs> for me. It's a bedroom. <laughs> Could you just uh, take my shirt off for me? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know Help. how. <laughs> Okay, we're going live in three, two, this is live, by the way. I do the uh, iCarly. Three, two, someday, hey, I'll, I'll see. see. <laughs> That's the way the world is supposed, supposed to, to be. be. <laughs> and I'll feel so wonderful. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, wanna, I can't wait to see the progression of the rest of this quarantine. Where my hair just like slowly just like I, I this is my this is just, gonna be like those dogs at the end that like their whole face is just covered. This is my one chance to have an excuse to try and look like a samurai. This is my only <laughs> time. What I want to. <laughs> I want a different. Direction. Well, because I want to get like the man bun because I don't think I'll look good with the man bun. Uh -huh. But like I have an excuse to try it out. Because it's like, well, I can't get a haircut in the first place. Oh God, you're right. I could maybe do a man pun. Yeah. Are we going? Yes. <laughs> oh, great. All right. Wait, wait, no, let me fix my hair before you <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to our first uh, YouTube show episode podcast. Our annual podcast that we'll be doing once a week. <laughs> our annual podcast once a week uh, called Behind the Camera with Action Studios. Uh, basically, I wanted to start this uh, YouTube channel to kind of just demonstrate what we're doing behind the scenes with Action Studios, but we also wanted to create a channel that could benefit people watching this. Uh, I, I think that we, we're in the process right now, like just a little uh, introduction about who me and Yo-Yo are, if you haven't really kept up with us. Me and Yo-Yo have started a company called Action Studios. We brought in our producer, Andrew, who's behind the camera, and it's kind of been ever since we were in like, what, like high school? Like middle school, we started making videos, and then I'm thinking like end of high school, we were like, we could do this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we, we started a channel called Tryhards and then that kind of started to take off and then we were like, well, we want to get better at doing this. So uh, we started, a, I, I went to film school for a while and then we came back and we started this uh, company called Action Studios, brought these people in and now we're doing commercial short films and aiming to do feature films and we're also on social media trying to keep up with all the TikTok trends and, and whatnot, but it's it's been a lot of fun and I feel like we're about to um, gain a lot of like progression with what we're doing. So that that's kind of like the intro of what we're doing here. And this show will be a weekly show where I want to try and tackle a topic of us trying to build our company, but also demonstrate to you guys what it might take. And also it might be able to help you guys out if you're dealing with some of the issues that we're kind of going through. And I, I think we've always really wanted to be transparent with our failures and our successes. Um, as we do this stuff, like we, if, if we fail, we want to show you guys so that you guys don't do it. And if we succeed, we want to help you guys also succeed. So this, uh, this kind of leads into the first topic for this week. Um, which is going to be uh, creating creative discipline. And that's like a problem that you and me have had. Uh, I, I've recently kind of hit this wall, especially during the quarantine, because we're filming this during the quarantine. Um, we're in like, we're in April. We still have to like, what, May 15th? Yeah. Which is just the, it's, it's kind of killing my creative drive. Um, but I feel like a lot of creatives have this issue where you kind of come up to this point um, where you're trying to keep up with everything, you want to be creative, but then you go to sit down and you have nothing. It's like writer's block, but it's like creative block, um, especially because we're trying to be in a world where we're cranking out content so fast. Um, I feel like I need to be like progressing and like coming up with content fast enough. And sometimes I have a mental block, but you, you've kind of been dealing with this a little bit more so. Um, well, I think there's no better feeling than like getting an idea and then like filming it and like seeing it all the way through and like mm -hmm. having a really solid idea. And there's nothing worse than being like, we need to film something and you have no ideas because then you make something and half the time it's just not good at all and mm -hmm. you feel terrible. But yeah, I do. I, I have been through this. I go through this issue a lot with creativity and I get in like a, a block very frequently. And sometimes it's just about like for me, at least whenever I talk to you about stuff, uh, it's nice to have someone else's perspective, even if it's nothing huge, just to kind of take your mind out of like the routine that it's in. Because like sometimes when you're thinking of a story, like in my case, you're like so fixated on that story and nothing can like change it. And then when someone says, what was if you like flip the whole story or something mm -hmm. like that? And it might not change your whole idea, 
but it changes some like small factors in it. We're like, oh, I would like to incorporate that or this mm-hmm. or that. So that's kind of have like that's helped me is like just talking to other people about it because mm-hmm. I like to do things all on my own. Right. And then when like when it comes to creativity, it's just hard to just sit there and just think. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. And to be more specific, what we're going to try and tackle this week on this episode um, and what we're going to be built doing from like Monday till probably next Monday um, is trying to tackle this issue that I think a lot of creatives have. And we'll talk to some other creatives about how they overcome uh, their creative mental blocks. Cause I, I have this a lot and this whole week has kind of been annoying. Like more specifically, it's like, I'm trying to sit down and then it's like, well, Andrew, our producer is like, well, we need content for tomorrow. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what, what we should do or whatever. So, um, beforehand, what, what I've done is I, I've done a lot of research, uh, or just like as much as I possibly could before today about the topic of, you know, overcoming this like creative block that I think a lot of people have. And I, we want to try and see if we could kind of tackle the issue. The biggest thing that I, I, I discovered when I was going through, um, the biggest hat or what the, what is it? The habits that billionaires create was there's, there's a few of them. (laughs) They have a lot of really good habits, but it kind of, I kind of boiled it down to this issue where it's like, okay, so how do we create creative discipline? Um, and the, the solution wasn't one-to-one. It's like, I think the first thing that you have to do that a lot of these, these people were talking about was identify your issue um, and what problem that you have um, because everyone's issue is going to be a little bit different. So mine, from just experience, the reason I've been having creative block recently is because I, one, I haven't been working out. I didn't really feel good like this past week. The quarantine's kind of getting to me because I'm an extrovert. Um, and um, you, uh, we've talked about this a lot, but for some reason, my confidence level when I'm on camera a lot, just like diminishes and I don't know what that is. And so my creative mental block is more so it's like, oh, this would be a really fun idea, but people are going to think I'm stupid. Right. And we hear this all the time. Like I, I listen to Gary Vee and all these other people that talk about this constantly. And like, it's just like, well, yeah, just get over it. Don't care about other people's opinions. But I think that there's more to this and I'll, I'll get into the steps that I think that will kind of help it. But what, what is it for you? Like why, when you sit down, what struggle are you having? I think it's just focus. Like I have a hard time just sitting there and being like, I'm going to do something creative. Like I have like, like moments where I'm like, oh, I can sit down and like focus on something right now. And those moments, like I have to take advantage of in that moment. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's never like, I can't just all of a sudden turn it on. Like Mm -hmm. I have to like just naturally like get the creative juices going. Mm Mm-hmm. Because if not, it's like a routine. Yeah, I think we were, we were also talking about this issue too, and other people might deal with this. And I was talking to one of our friends about this as well, where it's like when you go to sit down and like you really want to do something. I, like I recently, I've just been like, let's say like I was scrolling through things on Netflix, and I just sit there for two hours because like when I sit down and I think about like, oh, do I want to watch this movie? I've already run through it all the way through my head. So like it's like when I'm sitting down to write a script or whatever, it's like I've sat down, I've thought about it all the way through. I don't really know where to start. And then I've already gained the satisfaction of doing it. Yep. So now I don't want to do it. Or I sit down and I don't know where to start. And then it just gets so hectic. And then I turn to my screen. Yeah. Right. And then it's just like, well, I'll deal with it later. Like my stress, I didn't know where to start with it. Yeah. You're like, I don't know. I was like, yeah, ex- exactly. You're like, I'm not feeling it right now. I'll mm-hmm. figure it out later. But like the problem is, is you never really feel it for like some projects that you do. You just never really like mm-hmm. feel it. And then I, I've also talked about this too. It's like, sometimes I'll come to you with an idea and then I'll say it out loud. And you're like, oh, that's a cool idea. And then I won't do it. Because you got the satisfaction. Because I got the satisfaction of telling you I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. So I've, I've been trying to teach myself not to do that. But let's. I'm going to break down um, into... Here's here's what I, I've discovered. And there's a bunch of stuff. So we can kind of pick and choose. So the goal this week for me and Yo-Yo is to look at this research and see what we want to apply from beginning to end. And again, a part of this show that I didn't really mention in the beginning is like this whole show is also for us to become better at filmmaking. And our ultimate goal is to make movies, TV shows, content. Uh, I, I personally want to be a feature film director someday. So I want to try and focus all this energy into how do I become a better director? And I think to start a company, to start wanting to get this like creative muscle flowing, I think it's important to actually identify these habit building um, or like discipline building 
habits throughout the week first that I think a lot of people are like, well, be creative. I want to be a film director. It's like, well, maybe you need to take care of yourself first. So here's, here's a couple of things that I, I realized. So one, there's a, there's a few major things that I don't know what you have to tackle first. And maybe we could talk about it. Well, here's one real quick that I just thought of. And this one's one that really affects me is I get bored like really easily. Mm -hmm. Like what if I'm not doing a project that I'm into, I get bored of it. Or if I don't have a task that I like enough, I get bored and then I don't want to do like anything. Mm -hmm. And like, that was my biggest problem in school is that like, I would just get bored in the classroom. Right. That's, that's the problem with some of the things that I do is that Mm -hmm. if I get into a rhythm with one project, I get bored of that project. Right. Like if I do something for like a week straight, I get bored of it. Mm-hmm. And then once I'm bored of it, it's like, it's hard for me just to do it on my own. And keep it constantly. Yeah. So, it's like, I need new things all the time. So that I, so there is, there is some stuff that I kind of found about this. And again, I don't know where we need to start with this, but so Warren, do you know what Warren Buffett is? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So Warren Buffett tells a lot of people to do this strategy, right? Like, well, do they know who Warren Buffett is? Do you know who Warren Buffett is? Warren, well, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Did you go look him up? Great. Come back. Because I don't know how to explain him. Warren he's an Buff- investor. He yeah. invests in companies and stuff. He's, and stuff he's like I think he's worth like $90 billion or something like that. It's like something insane. But what he does and he teaches a lot of people and long, uh, young entrepreneurs is one, to identify your purpose. Everybody needs a purpose. I think we as human beings are designed to have a purpose, but you kind of need to find that for yourself. And one thing that he talks about is sit down And think about 25 massive dreams that you want to accomplish in your life, like huge, and then boil it down to five, Mm. cross them all off. And he's like, do not pick any others until those five are done. And you might be doing those five your entire life. So would you like, if you had 25, would you start like putting some of them together or would it just be like 25 and you have to cross out 20 of them? Like, I guess the idea of that, so like for me, I've always wanted to check, like he, I don't, I have to, I, again, with all of this, I've kind of just like done a um, skim through of everything and I'll probably do more research through the week for this stuff. But what he, it seemed like he's talking about is like pick dreams that are so big, you will take your whole life to do. Like, I want to create an Action Studios theme park. Yeah. Like, I've always wanted to compete with Disney. Will I ever do that? Probably not. Would that be in your top five? That's like my top five. Oh, wow. I want... <laughs> <laughs> what is your other four? <laughs> so it's a pretty big dream, right? <laughs> I want... I, my, like, my, my second one would to be make, like, a franchise like Marvel where we create superhero movies. Actually, no, more specifically, I want to create the next type of Lord of the Rings, which is some of the ideas that we've already been talking about. Like we, we've been, more, wow, world building uh, recently a lot. Uh, I've been working with a lot of writers and I want to create the next series that's like, oh, this is like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, whatever. Yeah. Those are huge dreams. Yeah. So I wake up every day knowing that I'm like, only so much closer to my dream that like I have something to wake up for every single day. That's kind of what fuels. Yeah. I mean, you've seen me like why I run action studios. I wake up every single day. I've kind of created a purpose to wake up to. Yeah. Right. And so this is what Warren Buffett talks about. It's like, pick these things that like you are aiming towards like most of your life. Right. And some of them could be smaller. Like I want to travel the world more. Like that's like my third one. That one's like, feasible Mm -hmm. i could probably do that faster but my other two like it's going to take me a really long time to do so like that's kind of what constantly drives me it's just like well i took a step closer to this but there's like a billion steps to get there so i I have something to wake up to include since you want to travel the world and you want to make a theme park it's kind of all a similar goal like you could be making movies and the worlds that you build go into a theme park and then Mm -hmm. the movies that you make you can travel the world to make them it's kind of what I want to do, yeah. right? Like I, I, another, my secret desire of making films is one, cause I really like hanging out with people and yeah. like ministering and hanging out with people. And two is, uh, just traveling. Yeah. Like if I could do feature yeah. films and travel while doing it, like that's my dream. That'd be yeah. so sick to do. Like yeah. imagine Lord of the Rings going through that stuff. So that, that's one, um, which we can kind of put into practice this week. The other thing Wait, that which I, one we put into so the, <laughs> Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, write Making down 25. I thought you said make the theme park. I was make like, the Whoa. theme park <laughs> this week. <laughs> that, that would be amazing. Right. Um, I'm down to do the 25. Like, 
I think everybody should. So I I think that's kind of like step one is write down what you want to do in your life. So the problem is some people might not know what they want to do in their life. And so I know that that is the struggle for some people. Um, and so another method, so I'm going to be kind of flopping around here and then hopefully in the edit for this YouTube video, we'll kind of piece it together. Um, but the other one is again, going back to identifying your problems. So I I think we kind of talked about that mind's confidence, building up all this other stuff. Another one. So for me, for me, it's building up a routine of mind, body, soul, right? And this is what a lot of entrepreneurs do is they focus on these three things. And I know that the girls are going to be laughing at us when they hear this like mind, body, soul, baby. But it's like, this is what they do is like, like they wake up early. There's something about waking up early. They wake up early. They make sure they always get seven hours of sleep. They turn off technology an hour before they go to bed. They make sure that they work out or at least are active for 30 minutes every single day. They're eating healthy. They're checking their money in their bank accounts every single morning. They're reading something and learning something and they're meditating or doing something for their soul, right? Like mind, body, soul, whatever that is for you, that that, that is what they do every single day, right? And these are the people that are like billionaires. There's obviously something to that that I want to put into practice because I think when I started to wake up early, I started to eat healthy. I started to work out every day. I've been reading every day. Like when I was waking up in the morning, I was feeling good. And then my confidence level is good. So I think for me, I'm going to start focusing on that. There was another one in here that you were talking about boredom. And this kind of went into the topic of slow versus fast thinking. So like I said, this topic is bigger than I thought it was. So there's like three different things. Boredom seems to be like a really big one, at least for you too. It's just like, well, I get bored really fast or whatever. So the idea between, uh, and I, I'm going to butcher it a little bit because I need to dive into it more, but the idea behind slow versus fast thinking is that we are very, very good at fast thought processes, right? Processes, which, because we are, we're constantly entertained with video games, our phone, whatever. Like I've noticed that like, when when there's like a silence or whatever a lot of us will just go to our phone because what we want to do is we want to our brain is very good at filling the space and so what you want to do is fill it and then all of a sudden what you're doing is you're creating this thing where it's like instant gratification instant gratification because you're just getting it Um, and this kind of goes into a lot of other things but um essentially what this guy Uh, that I was listening to talks about is we need to become better at slow thinking. Slow thinking is taking the time to sit on a subject and think about it deeply, which will then help your fast process thinking uh, or help your fast think. You'll think faster, better, essentially. Because let's say like, you know, like when as a film director, so this ties into like filmmaking, as a film on a, we've been on sets for commercials and all this stuff like all the time, right? So, so an issue will come up and all of a sudden, like I will say, yes or no, we should do this. Right. But the more I spent in slow thinking, thinking about these problems, thinking about these issues ahead of time, the faster I can respond to that. And you know that if I tell you that I'm coming from a place that I've actually thought about it and you can trust my judgment versus a lot of people don't take the time to think about these things. They're like, uh, maybe yes. Right. And their confidence level or their, their thinking So this is kind of like a long roundabout, but essentially what this guy was talking about is modern monitors and screen time. And we, we as human beings have, especially in our day and age, there are screens everywhere. And what this is doing is right here, right here, all these screens, like looking at us, we've, we don't allow our mind to get into a process of slowing down and being bored right like the second you're bored you're like ah phone right i need to like fill that time but what you're doing is you're actually hindering yourself from allowing yourself to dip into this thing so this guy was doing this study it was like a ted talk right but he was talking about like he he did a practice where he didn't look at his phone all day and what happens is yes you start to get extremely bored you get really bored but then what starts to happen is if you force yourself to be in that state of mind it forces you to fill it with something, create an idea, do work, learn something new. Because the second you go to your screen, 
you're like, oh, I'm feeling the boredom and it feels good. You're getting like a dopamine hit. But if you force yourself to be bored, this is where this guy was talking about like creatively, like study wise, this is where you can start creating a lot or people, people that don't look at their screens or play a lot of video games, which is, I, this is going to be a stretch and I'm not, don't quote me on this, but sometimes this is why I feel like women are actually better at being like the planners or like, let's do this. This is really fun. They don't play as lo a lot of video games like males do. Now they are a lot more are, but I, it's funny because I hang out with all these, the, our friends like Cynthia, Sen and Hannah go follow them on Instagram. Um, but they're like, let's do this. This would be fun to plan, whatever. It's because they're, they don't go to screens. They go to, well, let's make an event. Yeah. Like I'm so bored. Let's go hang out with somebody. Yeah. They put themselves and I don't even think they know that they're doing it, but they put themselves in a state of boredom and they're like, ah, we got to fill it with something. And I've noticed with you and me and I've noticed it with myself, the second I'm bored or if I'm not working on something, I'm like phone, TikTok, Instagram, yeah. scroll, whatever. And I, I like, it's just like second nature. So this is something else that I think that I'm going to start trying to put into practice this week is turning off my screen, turning off my phone, actively telling myself, okay, from this hour to this hour, I'm going to not look at my phone for like four hours or three hours and actively put myself in like a creative time. It's funny that you say that because when I was, when I, when we first moved into this house, it was a big deal for me that I wanted to like get out of this, like state where like I, I was really uncreative when I didn't move into this house um and I wanted to get like out of that state and something that really helped me is when I just like left like when I woke up in the morning I didn't check my phone like the first thing I did is I like purposely like restrained myself from looking at my phone and then I never looked at my phone I went and did everything I needed to do in the morning and then I would see how long I can go without looking at my phone and then the second I looked at my phone it felt like my day just like got like ruined mm. and it was like it's like I needed but like there was a there was like there's a part of me that's like, I need to just check my messages to see if anyone needs anything from me. But like, once you like look at your phone, it's like, if you can have the strength to be like, what messages do I have? Okay, I'm going to put my phone back down and leave it. Then like, that's great. And I did that a couple times. But the second I'd stop and be like, I'm going to watch a quick YouTube video. Then I just like, my whole day was like ruined. And mm. I like, when I, I was like significantly more bored after that. Mm. I, I get like that too. Sometimes like the other day I was on a creative go and then I laid down for 10 minutes. I started scrolling through TikTok and when I was done, I'm like, what was I doing? Yeah. Like everything kind of hit the fan. And it is interesting that you talk about that because I remember when we first came in, you were stoked. You're like, I'm not really playing video games. Yeah. I'm not doing this. And we talked about this when we were walking in Yosemite a couple months ago. Yeah. You're like, I don't, I don't want to be playing as much video games, but like your brain, you have yeah. to. Yeah. And that's how I feel sometimes. Yeah. And I've been feeling that this week. So I, so Getting getting to the point, I think this week, the things that I'm gonna focus on is I'm gonna try and I'm gonna actively turn off my screens for a certain amount of time. I'm going to wake up really early and uh, basically try and work out and read like I was doing before. Um, and then I'm gonna have a routine at night where I want to actively um, turn off my screens, turn off things an hour ahead of time, and read something else. And then this week, I want to see if I can fuel that energy into practicing um, lighting techniques because I think as a director, I haven't actually used the camera a lot. I've always directed. I've never really touched the camera. So my goal this week is to kind of create a creative discipline. We're going to do TikToks this week. But I'm gonna, I think for me, it's more about focusing on that mind, body, soul, my, phys my physical health and my mental health and like meditating this week. What kind of meditating do you do? I, I, I read my Bible in the morning and then I meditate on just like deep thought all day. And like I... Very, like just clear your mind. I do. I do. There's a couple of different methods of like meditating. And I was watching this guy. I need to go remember his name. Um, but this guy... I, th he, I agree with him where he's like, I don't meditate to clear my mind. I meditate on the thing that I want to get done this week. That's what I think I need to work on with like my meditation. It's just like, all right, what am I getting done this week? And he'll sit for like 10 minutes. I need to go look up the guy's name. I'll put him on screen, but, um, he just sits, he does breathing exercises for like, for like a, a minute. And then he just sits and he's like, okay, what am I getting done? And he just, he puts it into, I'm getting this done. He just focuses on that for 10 minutes and it kind of fuels his day. So I that's think, kind of what I'm going to do. I think there's a power in the not thinking about anything because we go back to that slow thinking. I've done meditation before where like you just sit 
and you don't think about anything like you just focus on your breathing Mm. and then like when you're like done you kind of come out of it and you kind of feel like almost like you've gone through that really boredom stage Mm. that you were talking about yeah and you like come out of it and like you're like you feel like slower and you're okay with that you feel Mm. like you're okay with taking your time on things i don't know if you ever watch like i i don't know why i like i just when i was young i'd always watch like people that are older than me like how did they like Mm -hmm. do things and my grandparents one of my grandpa always does things very slowly Mm. and like it was like it was kind of like annoying but at the same time it's like he's getting just as much stuff done during the day he's just going at a slower pace which is okay but there's some kind of like um what's the word it's uh I don't, I don't know, but you, you, you just feel calm and at peace mm. when you're doing something slowly because you're okay with taking your time on it. So maybe, maybe I'll add in the morning to slow down. And then during my creative time, when I shut off my monitors yeah. is when I'll do more focused thinking yeah. of what I want to get done or well, vice you should versa. Just try the, cl- like just clearing your mind. It's literally, you just, you just sit there and you just breathe and you focus on your breathing mm. to the point where like, anytime you like start drifting off and thinking about something, you bring it back to your breathing and it's really hard. But just like try it. It might not work. It might not be yeah, the best for you. It's that guy that talks about like focus on a dot. And then anytime yeah. you start going away from it, get back to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. help you focus. Which is, it is interesting too, because I do think we live in a generation where we want things so fast. Yeah. That if you slow down and then you start doing stuff, it it feels like you're doing a lot. Yeah. And you're, and you're fueling your, your boredom, yeah. right? Or you're fueling like, oh, I'm not bored. Yeah. Versus if we're up here all the time, we're freaking out. Like yeah. I got to get so much stuff done. I'm, I need to stay active. Then when you try and slow down or you need to speed up, you can't get any faster. Yeah. So that, that's an interesting thought. So what, what are you going to try and tackle this week? Well, I liked your whole thing of the 25 goals that Warren Buffett has. Um, that seems very doable and something that I feel like is just good for anybody to actively be thinking about what they want. Because a lot of the time we kind of go through our day just like meandering around and being like, I want to make a movie, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But you never really sit and think like, wh- like, why do you want that? And like, like, mm-hmm. what do you truly want from your day to progress towards something? Mm-hmm. So like setting goals and actively, actively thinking about my future is one that I was, um, I'm totally up for. The screen time thing is great. I think. But they know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the screen time thing is great. It's like I spend too much time on my screen and I do feel it when I'm like on my screen and I'm trying to be creative. It doesn't like always work for me. Um, like not having my phone next to me when I'm working, it's so much easier to work. Mm. So yeah, focusing on screen time and then, uh, that meditation. Um, I don't know if it's like, I, I, I'm also trying to like get more flexible cause I'm so stiff in my hips. So like maybe doing some kind of yoga where I like breathe and stuff like that might be mm-hmm. most useful. Um, and then are you going to act, are you going to try and work on anything creative wise as a creator that you want to do this week? I mean, we have our TikToks we're doing, but we, I have that other project I'm working. I have so much footage to watch. <laughs> I don't uh, think I have time this week to, to like. So you'll, you'll try and focus this into the other stuff that we're doing for our company. I'm going to so. try and focus it on TikTok. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When it comes to doing like our, when we're just come to like brainstorming our TikToks, mm-hmm. I'll try and, uh, by the way, Yo-Yo is our like writer and co-director for Action Studios. So he helps me come up with a lot of stuff, uh, when we go to write and whatnot. Like I, I always make really serious scripts and he puts the humor in it. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to hold on to like all this creative juices that we're building. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird. Juices. <laughs> mm. um, I'll squeeze it out and I'll drink it. <laughs> I'll just build it all up, and then once we need to make something, I'll just. You know, this is getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it for TikToks, okay? <laughs> That's it. Great. Great. <laughs> all right. So this week, I mean, we're gonna start putting that into practice. Uh, and these then methods. At the end of the week, we're gonna. We'll sit recap down. here on Friday, and see if they work. Let me know in the comments if this helped you guys out and then make sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We're posting a lot there and we have a lot of big stuff coming up soon. Uh, We just dropped a short film called Candyman that's about to come out. It got nominated for a film competition. I think we got 11 nominations, which is really awesome. Um, And we're going to continue to hope to grow. And we have a lot of other projects that actually came about from the comment section of TikTok, which is really cool. And hopefully we can talk about that soon. But we are listening to what you guys want. So let us know in the comments what you guys also want to see more of. Let me know if this helped. Uh, And we'll see you guys next time.